The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome. Continuing with our liturgical, liturgical talks, I'd like to, right after the hymn of praise comes the salutation, and then the collect for the day. That's going to be our topic today. There is a collect assigned to every single Sunday of the church here and to the feast days. It's a prayer that is usually related to the texts, or at least the season. An individual collect will only be heard once a year at most. And most of these prayers have been in continuous use for 1,500 years or more. Um, using them, we join with the communion of saints from generations ago and generations to come. And they're teaching us how to pray then and how to do it simply and directly and boldly. The colleagues, they are short, they are concise, they are simple. They don't depend on my creativity or eloquence. I like that. Um, and uh, with the colleagues, we lift our voices together, making our appeal to our Heavenly Father with laser-like focus. Uh, if you would, turn to the back page of your bulletin. There's a, a five-part structure to colleagues that you'll see. We'll use the colleague for Pentecost evening as an example. The colleague begins with an address to God that is often simple as, O, o Lord, or Merciful Father. In the Collect for Pentecost evening, the address is a simple, O God. Then follows the rationale, which describes some attribute of God that, that serves as the basis on which we will make our petition. In this case, who gave your Holy Spirit to the apostles. The petition itself is the heart and substance of the prayer where the actual request is made. It, it almost always begins with an imperative, a command. Give, bless, defend. Here the, the, the petition is grant us that same spirit. It's kind of cheeky of us, right, to command God to do something? More on that in a minute. Um, uh, the petition is frequently followed by the benefit, which states the desired purposes of the petition. Here it is that we may live in faith and abide in peace. The colic concludes with the termination. Other colics conclude with the short termination through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, the collect for the day always concludes with a full termination, uh, Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. Notice how succinct that collect is. Every word counts. They've been sanded down of any unnecessary words over 15 centuries. And, and so they're very brief. We should never hurry through them. While many colleagues follow this five-part pattern, many break from the pattern and omit one part or another. Uh, and that's part of the beauty of the ancient colleagues. They never felt a slavish obedience to that, that pattern. An example is the 20th century after, 20th Sunday after Trinity, where the rationale is omitted. And another example is the second Sunday of Lent, where the benefit is omitted. Still beautiful collects. Um, never is God petitioned in the singular in, with the collects. Uh, no collect of the day will ever start with, I just want to thank you, Lord. Um, that's fine for personal prayers, but with the collect, it's us coming together before the Lord, the Bride of Christ, um, petitioning our Lord. And the colleagues are never timid. They are bold and forthright. And that's how Jesus taught us to pray, right? He doesn't want us to be doubtful or mousy about our prayers. Check his miracles. He loves it when people come up to him and demand him, heal, uh, I want to see, help me to walk, uh, help my daughter. He, he loves that when people come up to him with faith and confidence. Um, and James writes, when you pray, you must believe and not doubt at all. Whoever doubts is like a wave in the sea that is driven and blown about by the wind. That person should not suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. So the colleagues are never timid. Uh, they don't grovel. They don't even say please. Uh, they teach us to pray with boldness. For example, I love the collect for the first Sunday of Advent. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come that we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. We must be a blessed people uh, for God to invite us to address him with such boldness and confidence, even using the imperatives. One last thing. 
Collects are very bold. Um, a bold collect should never be followed by a wimpy amen. Say it like you mean it. Claim the collect for yourself. Claim the prayer. Own it as, as your own with a, with a robust amen. That's the collect. Um, uh, look at all, uh, last, last, last week we had a door offering for the synod and, and missions in the synod to translate Luther's stuff and, and publish it to mission fields. $1,500 was raised uh, by Good Shepherd. Thank you for that. Thank you for your generosity. And then finally, look at all those opportunities to serve. There's blood drive this week. The sign up for that is out in the narthex. Sandwiches in the park, school supplies, painting, food pantry, meals on wheels, all kinds of opportunities to serve. Order of service today is divine service setting for opening hymn, faith and truth and life bestowing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayers and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused your holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to 
The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. And for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, 
and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text is the gospel lesson. When my children, children were younger, parenting seemed so much more straightforward. Monitor what they watch on TV and how much and ensure they eat well and exercise their minds and their bodies regularly. Tell them it's bedtime. Tell them it's time to get ready for church. It was not without its challenges, but it pretty much, they pretty much had to go along with the program, right? Now, as the parent of adult children, it's not so easy. There are things to say, advice to give, lessons to teach still, even commands I want to command. But I can't do that anymore. I'm not in the driver's seat. I'm in the back seat of a bus. 
a city bus whose driver doesn't need to answer to me anymore. At one time I could say all this and more, and now I can only say about this much. And even then I'm on thin ice. I always wanted them to grow strong and independent, but maybe not so strong, so independent. Earlier was easier also for God. God said, let there be light, and there was light. He, he said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the field, and it was so. It was so easy for him, and clearly he enjoyed it. No skin off his back. But a little later, God created man and put him in the garden and commanded him, saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, just not this one. And wouldn't you know it, that's precisely the one they find most alluring. And their sin and their rebellion would cost skin off his back. Earlier, when God told Abraham to get up and go, Abraham got up and went in spite of his gnarly and aching knees and, and his uh, failing strength and all the unanswered questions he surely had. Later, when God told Jonah to get up and go to Nineveh, Jonah got up and went, bought a one-way ticket for Tarshish. Wasn't so easy anymore. Earlier when Jesus said to would-be disciples, come follow me, they dropped everything. Their nets, their routines, the, the, the lucrative tax booth, and they followed. But now there's resistance. Men don't like his sermons. They don't like his miracles. The Pharisees say by the uh, prince of demons, he drives out demons. Not so easy anymore. He tells one would-be disciple to get up, follow. First, though, sell everything that you have, give the money to the poor, and then follow. And this guy, he didn't want to do that. He walked away. Earlier, it all seemed so much easier. In the 50s, 60s, early 70s, build a church, and they'll come. Church membership and worship was a cultural norm. Churches flourished across the land. Today, cultural norms have changed. They accuse Christianity as having been used to subjugate women or to silence science or to foster racism or fuel homophobia. They say it's used to cultivate self-loathing through cause for repentance and humility. Governments and corporations and news feeds and Facebook posts and the hearts of many are cold to the word, cold to God's church. Used to be easier, now not so much. In our readings today and in the observations of the world today, we have a paradox. God's word is all powerful. It creates things, changes things, brings things to life. Yet God's all powerful word can also be resisted. It often fails. These truths seem to contradict one another. But God has given men the, the freedom to resist God's all-powerful word and render it ineffective. Disciples saw this firsthand. They witnessed Jesus' word, the word incarnate, casting out demons and stilling storms and healing withered hands. But they also witnessed the incarnate word being resisted to the point of death by crucifixion. It's a paradox of the faith. In the Old Testament lesson, we have the promise, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, so shall my word be. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. Yet in the gospel reading, Jesus tells a sad little parable about how the seed falls on different kinds of soil, conditions, the hearts of men. Of the four types of soil mentioned, the seed is going to fail in three of them. Well, let's get into it. The sower walk, talks, walks through the field broadcasting the seed, probably barley or wheat, seed is seed. Law and gospel is law and gospel. In every case, the message is heard. 
What matters is what happens next. Fields at the time had paths around them and weaving through them for the workers, and they are compacted and worn smooth by the treading feet. They are hard and dry. Jesus is saying that there are hearts like this, hard and impenetrable, not at all receptive to God's word. Some folks made a decision long ago about God and his people, his church, and by gum, there's nothing that's going to change their minds. Man might come for a funeral here, a wedding here, or his wife might drag him to church for Christmas. The seed will be broadcast, the word will be proclaimed, but his heart is hard. Like trying to grow radishes on linoleum. And what's that about the birds? Seems there is another force at work. In verse 19, Jesus explains, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. When the word is sown, it's as if someone blows an inaudible whistle that summons a flock of pigeons that keep pecking away at the poor little seeds. The parable continues, some seed falls on rocky places where the bedrock of Galilee is close to the surface. It sprouts beautifully, but because the soil is shallow, it has no root. In the heat of the day, it quickly uh, shrivels. There are folks like that who initially receive the word with great enthusiasm. It germinates and tender little shoots spring up, but then one day it's all over. What happened? In many cases, it was a kind of emotional Christianity, a shallow, superficial faith, a faith that cannot handle disappointment or opposition or persecution or suffering. When the heat evaporates, the frothy enthusiasm, when happiness takes leaves, to them it feels like Jesus has also abandoned them. They have no root, no depth. Shallow people. Parable continues. Some of the seed falls among the thorns. He explains this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world choke out the word. Maybe his heart still aches from reading the morning's headlines, or her heart is troubled by doom scrolling through the news on her favorite social media platform. Or maybe some never slow down enough to answer the big questions of life. They're too busy with work and parties and children's athletics, and whenever they're not too busy, they, they turn on the screens and fill in the rest of the tiny little places with worthless things. No serious Bible study, no devotional life, no rigorous life of prayer. The weeds grow tall and abundant and luxurious and the little sprouts beneath them get no daylight, no rain, no space. So when the seeds fall on hard soil or shallow soil or soil full of choking weeds, they're going to fail. They're going to fail. What they have in common is that living effects hearing. If there's too much traffic in the heart and mind, if there's no depth to the person, if there are choking weeds, the, too many distractions, the seed will not stand a chance. Living effects hearing. Maybe this life of busyness and buying, of web surfing and leisure seeking, this life of easy dates and frequent cocktails and mounting monthly payments, maybe this life isn't as harmless as it seems. Bad living makes for poor hearing. So the next time you're perturbed because you don't think you got anything out of the service, don't be too quick, please, to pin that on the preacher or the pipes or the prayers or the fellow parishioners. In this parable, it's the soil that makes the difference. The seed is the seed. The gospel is the gospel. The Lord's Supper is the Lord's Supper. If you don't feel fed, especially after eating and drinking his body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins, then do a soil check, would you? Check the prep work. 
In this parable, it's the soil that makes the difference, not the seed, not the sower, not even the heat of the sun. The good news in this parable is that even in the face of opposition, God's word can and is and will bear fruit. True, Christianity no longer has the status it once did in our culture. In such a world, it's easy to wonder, how, how, how longer can we go? How much further? How much more can we go on? Jesus, however, offers us encouragement in this parable by acknowledging this is our reality. God's word can and will be resisted. That's the reality. We are not missing the right communications techniques, the appropriate public relations program. We're not missing the slick high-tech consultant who will turn everything around for us. No, we proclaim an all-powerful word that can be resisted and will be resisted. After all, we follow Jesus Son of God, word incarnate, all-powerful, resisted unto death on a cross. God raised him from the dead, defeating our sin, our death. And God wants all the world to know this and believe this and receive this salvation for themselves. The sower here actually is God. And he's in a hurry, isn't he? He's, he's, there's urgency to his work. So he's casting the seed with reckless abandon because he has no time to waste. He wants the entire field, the entire world to get the seed of the gospel. So he throws it everywhere, in prisons and schools and homes and group homes among the rich and the poor, the educated and the not, to every human being. He tosses the seed into books, into movies, into TV series, into daily conversations, hopefully. It's good seed. And he asks us to trust the Spirit's work as he works through the Word. God's word, only God's word, will accomplish the growth God desires in his kingdom, even in the most hostile and inhospitable environments. Some seed is going to land on good soil, and when it does, there's nothing, nothing that can stop it from sprouting and growing and bearing fruit. It will not return to him empty. It will accomplish his purposes and succeed in the thing for which he sent it. When it lands on good soil, or even just adequate soil, Jesus promises it will produce a crop 160, 30 times what was sown. The seed, it never looks like much, right? It's so small and shriveled and pale and inert. A bare field never looks like much either, for that matter. But when good seed is received by good soil, something almost like magic happens. Tender little shoots sprout up and grow and they get traction and then they really take off and bear fruit. When the good news is received into ready hearts, we may find ourselves saying things we never thought we'd say, doing things we never thought we'd do, giving things away that we thought were indispensable, believing things we thought were impossible, clinging to things, timeless truths that we assumed were myths. That's the miracle of the seed, the miracle of God's word. Trust in his word, it can be resisted, it is being resisted, but it is all powerful. And it brings about his kingdom where and when God desires. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. In our prayers, we pray for Barbara Wagner, who fell at work yesterday and is hospitalized. Uh, we pray for Edith Block, who is nearing death. Uh, we pray for Terry Beely, um, uncle of Lee, who was put into hospice this past week. 
Lee's father, Burl, was, um, his funeral was on Friday. We pray for Ted Algiers, who's having surgery on July 25th. We pray for my neighbors, Todd and Sue Christian. Their son, Paul, in his mid-40s, died suddenly a couple of days ago for reasons unknown. Please stand for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For repentance, that by every thorn and briar, God would warn us of sin and discipline us against temptation, so that we would place all trust in his promise of everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For devotion to the Holy Word, which God sends as abundantly as rain on the earth, that we may never take it for granted, but seek its help and refreshment in every circumstance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For an abundant harvest of believers, that God would bless pastors and missionaries as they sow his word to the nations, preparing the hearts of all who hear to believe and yield abundant fruit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For parents, that the, word, that the Lord would bless them with faithfulness as they plant his word into their children. And for children, that by his word the Lord would protect them amid the cares and troubles of this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather and bountiful harvest, that according to our Creator's word, he would send rain on the earth to make it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those suffering from illnesses of body or mind, especially those listed in the bulletin, those we've named, those whom we name in our hearts as well. That the Lord would give them healing, comfort them with his loving presence, Grant them patience to endure suffering and assure them always of the glory of Christ that awaits them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who partake of Holy Communion, that God would sustain his children in repentance and faith to receive Christ's body and blood for life and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabbath, our Lord, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing, Hosanna in the highest, sing, Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.